Jesus excellent. Oh, I know we can do a little bit better than that. They gave us some right then. They, they gave us some that said, Jesus, excellent. There's only one thing that, that I love that description of our God. Jesus, excellent. Thank you, choir, for reminding us that he is who he is. Just excellent all the way. We never seen perfection until we see, you know, until we experienced our God. Good morning, New Sardis. Oh, y'all know when I get to y'all want it back. Good morning, New Sardis. I am so glad it is Youth Month. It is Youth Month. Y'all look around at our young people. It is Youth and Young Adult Month. I'm so excited because they could have been anywhere. I say that all the time because it's the truth. They could, they, they could choose to go anywhere, but this morning they pressed toward the mark of a high calling. I was glad when they said unto me, come on now, let us, come on now, let us go into the house of the Lord. Acknowledging our awesome pastor for this opportunity. Our beautiful first lady. Other ministers and officers, you, New Sardis, and our online viewers. If you would, please stand for our prayer and the reading of God's word. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. I come to you this morning with a spirit of thanksgiving, with a grateful heart, God. God, I'm asking that you forgive us of anything that is not like you. Remove it, Lord. God, this morning, hide me behind the cross. More of you, less of me. My mouth, your words. My love, your heart. Lord, allow us to be in a spirit of receiving. That something may be done or something may be heard that allows people to know that you are still God all by yourself. We love you, Lord, and we know we cannot do this thing called life without you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you'll turn with me this morning to John 5, John chapter 5, verses 2 through 9, it would also be shown on the screen. Now, there, lay, there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these, lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the trouble, troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole. And whatsoever disease he had, and a certain man was there. Y'all say a certain man. Thank you. And a certain man was there, and he had an infirmity of 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lying and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately 
the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. This morning, church, I would like to talk to you. Y'all know I like to discuss a few things. I like to discuss a few things and come from the subject of, do you want to be made whole? And for our young people, the New Living Translation version said, would you like to be made well? You may be seated. Thank you. I believe it's safe to say that all of us at some point or another have listened to someone who is sick in financial trouble and we have listened to someone who possibly abuses or uses drugs and alcohol, someone who may be struggling with their sexuality. We've listened to people talk about their marriage problems their children not listening and, and simply giving them the blues. We've been a listening ear for, uh, for all types of people, people who have lost their jobs and cannot see their way. And in some cases, they have simply lost their way. Truth be told, church, they may even tell us that they feel like they're about to lose their mind. They seem to resonate with the resonate with or relate to the Grandmaster Flash's song. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. See, y'all know that I like I saw y'all jamming. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to. Y'all know that song. Y'all know that song. Y'all know that song. While this song, ladies and gentlemen, was written in, the in 1982, some 40 plus years ago, before some of us were even born, the lyrics ring so true and so loud and clear in today's societal discussions. Our friends call us on the phone to discuss how difficult life is for them. Our families, some of our families are at odds with one another and mental health issues seem to be on the rise. Some people, y'all, are just, they seem hopeless. They are sick and tired of being, go ahead and do it. I hear y'all, sick and tired of being sick and tired. These friends and family members are our John 5 and 3 people. They're blind, lame, and or paralyzed. Much like the certain man, y'all remember we said certain man, y'all said certain man. Much like the certain man John 5 speaks of, some people have been talking about the same situations for many, many years now. Makes me wonder, do you want to be made whole? Whole meaning not broken, damaged or impaired. So you ask, Minister Robinson, with all these different situations going on and in some cases for extended periods of time, you may be asking how, do, how can we be made whole? How can I get well? People always tell us that joy come in the morning, but they don't tell you how to make it through the night. I'm going to get you there. We on our way. First, we must acknowledge that we need help from God. We must acknowledge it. For 38 years, y'all, this lame man, lay on one of five porches of Bethesda watching other people get healed. Watching other people be blessed. The scripture said he watched an angel trouble the waters and watched others go first. Does that sound familiar? Watching other people get blessed. Y'all can talk back to me, it's all right, because, see, we talk about it all the time. I, I heard some people this week say they got a new car, but I didn't. 
They, they got a new job, but they, they know I'm more qualified. I should have got there. They got a recognition for being a good athlete, but they didn't call my name. They got new clothes and new shoes, but, but I didn't. We are watching other people in our minds be blessed. Some of, us, some of the people I mentioned earlier have been hurting for a long time because they have been focusing on other people and their blessings rather than focusing on Jesus. Instead of looking to the hills from which cometh our help, this man was watching the people around him. He was, he was so thrown off, he didn't even know he was talking to. He, in today's society, we tend to look everywhere to all types of sources. We look, at, we look to all types of sources, y'all, instead of looking at the source, instead of looking at the I am that I am, instead of looking at the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, we looking all around to our left and our right at other people. We're looking at our horoscopes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of us won't even leave the house without reading about the stars. We, we, that we, won't, we won't leave the house. It takes us a little few minutes, extra minutes. But when Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 19, describes God's creating the sun, the moon, and the stars, you won't even get up and talk to the creator. You don't have to worry about what the horoscope says. You got a direct connect. We turn to artificial intelligence, AI. You know, that's real big now. We talk about AI. We say it's AI. Y'all, that name don't bother y'all. The name itself should bother us. Artificial intelligence, the word artificial in the dictionary says it's imitation. That is lacking naturalness. It's fake intelligence. When we all know that God is the supreme thinker, he possesses an omniscient quantity and a quality of knowledge. He is the intelligent king, architect, economist, philosopher of creation. He is all that in a bag of chips. He all that. But some type of way, New Sardis, some type of way, we look to the news. We watch that faithfully. Five o'clock, I got to catch this news. Mm -hmm. We watching the news and social media, young people. We spend hours on social media. You sit down at, 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 at five o'clock, next thing you look up, it's 10 o'clock. You don't even know what you did with your time. But we look to the news and social media, and some of us, can barely sleep at night because our hands are glued to technology. We, we look for the next TikTok or who's going on vacation on Facebook or who posting the best picture on Instagram. We're searching all these places for the good news, but we, for some reason, do not trust the book of good news. We got a whole book of good news. You, you don't have to look far. You don't have to look too far. We have a whole book of good news. Thank you, Lord, for the good news. The good news is, y'all, I am the way, the truth, and the light. The good news, y'all, is I'll make a way out of no way. The good news, y'all, is yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, it comforts me. The good news, y'all, is that he has not given us a spirit of fear. The good news is that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's the good news I want to share with you, church. Thank you, Lord, for the good news. Thank you, Lord, for the good news, God. Thank you that it's the same word yesterday, that it will be tomorrow, that it is today. Thank you, God. Thank 
thank you, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. We thank you for the good news with all the bad news that we hear. If you ever just want to pick yourself up, if you ever want to do something for yourself, pick up the book of good news. Pick it up. He got it for us. Mighty God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. The text shares some good news with us in verse 6. Two powerful words, y'all, in, in verse 6. Just two. Jesus knew. Jesus knew. That's just powerful to me. Jesus knew. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you. Jesus knew already that this man had been there broken for years on top of years on top of years, that this man was not whole. He was not well. And although he knew this information about the man's situation, y'all, he didn't spend a lot of time talking. If you, He didn't spend a lot of time. He didn't give him a whole lot of time to give him a whole lot back. He asked him one question. Do you want to be made whole? It was that simple. Do you want to be? Would you like to get well? Because I'm convinced, much like people today, when Jesus asked this question, he, he, he began, the lame man began giving excuses. We learned a little knowledge uh, back in the day that says we... Excuses are tools of the incompetent, used to build monuments of nothingness, and those who specialize in them seldomly accomplish anything. Excuses. He began telling Jesus, well, well, well when I try to make it to the water, yeah, I try. When I try to make it to the water, someone, they step before me. Now, this touched my heart when he said, for I have no one. I have no one to help me. Although Psalm 72 and 12 says, for he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. Once again, Jesus, excellent. Once again, we're back at the source of talking to the creator. The Bible, this Bible verse about divine intervention tells us that no prayer of help goes unanswered by God. But when I hear this man, I can hear him saying, I have no one to help me. It brings my mind to we need to check our circles. We, we, we need to, I know that's tough, ain't it, y'all? We got to look around this. We need to check our circle. And for the young people, it, in the top of your phone, you got your top five. You got your favorites. We need to check out, you need to check and recheck who your favorites are. Because if they say call me, but when you call, they don't answer, you might want to check your five. If they say that I pray for you, but when you call, all they have is a negative word, you probably want to check your file. You want to look around at your circle and see the script, because the scripture says there was a multitude. Yeah, there were five different porches. They said it was a multitude of people. A whole lot. Y'all ask me, how many is there really? I don't, I, minister, I don't know. I'm just going to tell you, there's a lot of people out there for this man to say, I have no one to help me. Saints of God, did you know that you can be in a crowd and still feel all alone? You can be in a crowd and still feel all alone. Like you have no one to help. The church was packed, but no one helped me. 
Mm, the schools were full of educators, but no one to help me. The doctor's offices and the hospitals were fully staffed, but no one to help me. Can you see this man lying lame with, with a no one mindset? A no one to help me mindset? Daily, I, I work in a job that allows me to see some of the disparities, and daily children wake up hungry because their parents have made different choices with their money. Children coming to school saying, my mother does not want me anymore. When youth say that, we feel as though, Minister Robinson, that there's no one to talk to and no one understands us. Our babies are still having babies. And our young boys are going to the streets rather than running to the church, committing crime after crime after crime. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There are parents and teachers and educators, all types of adults simply passing them by. And I see you thinking, I see it, I see it on your face. I see you thinking we, we cannot say anything to people, children nowadays because of conflict, confrontation. It's difficult to talk to the ones around you because conversations are much, much like a Forrest Gump analogy that you never know what you're going to get. It's important that we get back to the basics, y'all. We got to get back to the basics, and where I mean back to the basics is this village mentality. That it takes a village. And I want to show you what our village should look like, our circle. We got to check our circles. I have a, a few members of my circle coming up. Got a few members of my circle. Y'all see them coming. Y'all see how they still... That's why y'all give them a hand as they come. Y'all give them a hand as they come. In our circle, and I'm going to leave it open this way a little bit so y'all can see us. But in our circle, you got to have a praying person. In our circle, you gotta have you gotta have a seasoned saint that knows some about know about something that they know. You gotta know that when I can't pray for myself, this seasoned saint know how to send not an email but an email. You gotta have that in your circle. You gotta have that person just gonna keep it real. They not going to go along and just be in your amen corner just because you said so. They're going to tell you when that just mm, what you think that may not be right. You got to have that person in your circle because periodically, periodically you will fall. Periodically you will fall. Periodically you're going to need a little help. Periodically, they don't know when you're gonna fall. They don't know what's going on. But you may say, "I'm in new. I'm in a school. I'm in a new school, and I need your help. I I can't make it by myself. Listen, I need. I may be new in my ministry, but I want to make sure I reach these young people. So I might need your help. I might want to lean on you sometime. I need your help, and your circle is the place where you should be able to get it. Because when we believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. This circle right here ought to be where you can get it. I ought to be able to fall any time and they pick me back up. You ought to be able to fall sometime because the word says, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. But when you look at them, look at them come get me. Look at them come get me. When I fall, you got to get back up. You got to have a circle that's going to help you get back up. Because the, the songwriter says, the songwriter says, we fall down. But we get up. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down. But they didn't stay there. They got up. Yes, we go through. Yes, we're hurt sometimes. Yes, that thing gets tight and it gets tough. But guess what? The God that we serve, he's not changing. He's the same today that it will be tomorrow that it was yesterday.
today. Thank you, God, for allowing me the grace to fall and the mercy to get back up. You got to have the right people in your circle. You got to have the right young people. Y'all see that? Y'all can't have everybody around you. Everybody can't be in your front row just because y'all want to go hang out. You can't hang out with everybody. You can't talk to everybody and tell them all your business. You just can't do that. Check your circle. God did not work in isolation, y'all. You say, what you mean? In Genesis 1 and 26, he said, let us make human beings in our image. Let us. His circle was Trump tight, y'all. He had God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He was Trump tight. He, he had his circle together. It was just them. But when your circle, it doesn't matter how many you got in it, but you need to make sure that they all got a role, that they all can come when you need something, that they all, you shouldn't be having to go outside of your circle very often. I know that that's tough because a lot of us got a lot of people around. A lot of us have a lot of people around. We got to tighten up our circles though, y'all. Everybody does not deserve to be in your front row. So in order to be, you asked me earlier, how, how, it, how, how can I be made whole? It's imperative that we first acknowledge that we need God's help. Second, we need to check our circles. And y'all, that's not something that you do just one time. You got to continuously, that's a quality check. You got to keep on checking that thing. Because then you keep talking to God. God, am I still aligned? All right, we can keep on going. God, am I still? Check with the source to make sure that your circle is all right. And then in addition to these things, I want to, I would like to encourage you that if you see something, say something. If you see something, Say something. Have you ever heard the saying, if you see something, say something? Have y'all heard that saying? The United States Department of Homeland Security, they actually stamped this slogan in 2010, referencing terrorism and attacks. If you see something, you should speak up and tell somebody. Now, while they've trademarked this slogan, I want to encourage us as Christians to use it in our spiritual walk. I want to encourage us to use this in our spiritual walk. If you see something, say something. Now, while they get, get some people on the phone, y'all. Y'all know how we call people and talk about stuff? Y'all, it's okay. Y'all know, because somebody called, y'all know we call people and talk about stuff. We talking about people that's driving by. We talking about, I mean, just stuff. Whatever come up, it come out when we on the phone, and it just go. Our young people put everybody on a group. It's about 10 of them on there. Ain't nobody looking at each other. The camera's looking at the ceiling, but they are on there together just talking about stuff. Get some people in your group chats and talk about how God made a way out of no way. How God fed me when I was hungry. How God kept a roof over my head. How God, how you witnessed God's grace and mercy when he spared your life. Although we went some places that we should not have been and we stayed a little too long. How, how you and, or someone that you know had a problem and God healed them delivered them and brought them out. Jesus said, in verse 8, take up your bed, rise. Take up your bed and walk. Y'all suggest to me that there got to be some action going on. We can't talk about it, saints. We got to be about it. 
We got to be about the Lord's business in this day and time. And not just a show to bring it into church. It got to be the same person that show up here that's at the house because our young people are watching. And that's what they see, the examples that they see. We got to be honest because if we keep it 100 with ourselves, we can keep it 100 with everybody else. And the man immediately was made whole. Immediately. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Jesus don't take a break. He can heal you right where you're sitting. He can love on you when you driving to work. Don't matter the day nor the hour. He can be, he's right there, omnipresent. And I thank you, Lord, for your presence. The people in our circle, y'all, should be comfortable with knowing that God is amazing. But not just that he's amazing, but to be able to talk about it. We got to start putting God in the same place as y'all. When I was on Facebook, I looked to see they promoting some type of new club or something. And, and, and I mean, they shared it over 400 times. But I go on our page and we might have 20 likes. Maybe one or two shares. Share the good news, y'all. Share the good news that our youth and young adult are here and that they're coming to church and that they're in economic empowerment sessions and that they're going to choir rehearsal and that they're in dance. Share the good news. Our babies are writing songs. Share the good news. And as my seasoned saints, y'all know I love when I talk. But as my seasoned saints like to say, we ought to show some signs. We ought to show some signs, saints. We got to be an eyewitness for God. And I'm, I'm going to encourage you to just go run to your dead. Yeah. Run to your dead. Yeah. I want y'all tell, you know, typically I don't tell you to look at your neighbor, but I want you to tell, tell your neighbor, run to your dead. Yeah. Like the woman at the well uh, said, said, I know a man. The woman at the well said, I, I know a man. Run, tell that. Yeah. Paul was blind on Damascus Road, but Jesus restored his sight. I know, I know. run, tell that. Run, tell that. Like the woman with the issue of blood who said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Run, tell that. Jesus on the lines of communication because his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. If the Lord never does anything else for me. If the Lord never does another thing for me, he's done enough. Give me some saints that understand. They can think back. They like Paul. They can think themselves happy. We ought to be all right with just telling them, thank you, God. We ought to be all right to stand to our feet and give them the praise. We ought to be okay to tell them, God, if it wasn't for you, and God, if it wasn't for you holding me, comforting me, Heavenly Father, I, where would I be? Run tell that. Tell your story to these young people. Tell them how we went through to get to. Tell them, run, tell that. Our Savior came that we might have life and life more abundantly. That we would not have to live a lame, broken, incomplete life. I thank you, God. I thank you, Father. I thank you, God. That one night, one Friday night, on a hill called Calvary, one night on a hill called Calvary, they stretched my savior wide. Oh, they hung him high. He 
He hung his head and for me he died. For you he did this. He didn't have to, saints. He didn't have to. He could have got down at any time. He could have come down. But for me, you did it just for me, God. For you, he did it just for, he did it for us. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for loving us, God. But that's not where, saints, that's not where the story, it don't end there. Oh, mighty God, it don't end there. morning early Sunday morning he rose he rose with all power in his hands he got up full of purpose and he got up full of promise God I thank you aren't you glad church that he's a healer aren't you glad church that he's a way maker aren't you glad that he's a keeper Aren't you glad, church? God, we thank you. If you, we know he didn't have to do it. But he did it just for me. You got to make it personal, y'all. You Young people, you got to make it personal. I know right now it may not resonate, but know that he loved you enough. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you, Lord. If you've been feeling like the lame man and you have no one to help, I encourage you to try God today. I encourage you to try God today. I encourage you to try God today. You don't have to walk by yourself. At New Sardis, we will walk with you. As Pastor always says, if, if you are looking for a church home, we are looking for you. We've made room. Some of us feel lost and alone. Some of us. Some of us. Hallelujah to your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. That's my sister, y'all. That's my sister, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Some of us just, we need to be connected to the source. God, I've been disconnected for quite some time, God. But here we are, right together. We, we got room. We have room. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. If you just don't know, come on down. Y'all, y'all see, y'all see these babies. Y'all give these people a hand clap of praise. We've made room for you at New Sardis. We love you here at New Sardis. We don't have to, you don't have to have it all together. Because God don't call the equip, he equip who he called. Y'all, we made room for you. We got to acknowledge that we need his help. We ain't got it all together, y'all. We got to acknowledge that. And while we acknowledging that, that new starters, we'll help you check your circle. And we just want to remind you that when you see something, if you see something, you got you to gotta say something. 
If it's okay to tell them thank you while you're driving in your car. Turn that phone off. Turn the radio off. Give them his time. It's okay to spend a little time with God. Amen. We got another one, y'all. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yes, sir. Y'all, stand to your feet for these people. Y'all stand to your feet and tell them we love you. We welcome you. We thank you for coming. We love you already. Already we love you. That's who your new Sardis family is. I remember being across the street from a park. And I saw some people cooking out, young men. And then they started to hug and embrace. And I said, y'all know I had to go check it out and see what's going on. It wasn't good. They, they talked about how they were initiating in a gang. But y'all, they loved on them boys. I, I, they loved on them so. So that's why I asked you to stand to your feet and give God some praise. Because when people come into the house of the Lord, we ought to show some signs, saints. We ought to be excited, saints. Like we at the game, like Pastor said, like we at HBCU. We ought to tell God, thank you for this whole first row. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. That these babies decided to come here and feel love. We have Corey Parker, a man coming for baptism. Amen, amen. And I want y'all to know, Miss Tracy, did they joined for vacation Bible school. We have Ashton, Ashton Starks for baptism. Come on, Ashton. Just ask for Corey. Okay. We have Miss Tiffany Franklin coming from for a Christian experience. The daughter of Reverend Jacqueline Hayes and my big sister. Thank you, God. We have Miss Ayana Davis coming for baptism. Amen. Come on, young. Come on, baby. This Corey right here, y'all. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, God, and hallelujah to your name. Come on, let's bless God for the message and for the messenger. Come on, let's bless God for the message and for the, come on, y'all, let's bless God for the message and for the messenger. Thank you, Minister Kim, for blessing our hearts and for challenging us today. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? These babies who are with us, let me ask y'all a quick question. Now, y'all believe that Jesus died for your sins. And then Jesus got up with all power in his hands just for you. You believe that? The Bible says as if, if you believe it, if you confess it, then you're already saved. That right now in you believing that and expressing that, God has already heard your heart and that you're already saved. What does it mean to be saved? It means that you walk in the newness of life. It means that the thoughts that you, that'll come up in your spirit, you have something to fight against, though. That means when you get sad sometimes, you can say a prayer and God will make you glad. With you all saying that, with you all making that particular decision, that is the most important decision that you'll ever make in your life. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Regardless of what school you go to, regardless of who you marry in life, regardless of the kind of car you drive in, neighborhood you stay in, your soul salvation and the way you live for God through Jesus Christ 
is the most important decision that you'll make. <laughs> Period. So what we're going to ask is that you all go with these leaders, and they're going to get some information from you. 